peace and freedom, and grace be with you. Uh, my name is John Clifton. Welcome to another episode of Hard Fire. Uh, a friend of mine in Queens has an expression about the police, which goes simply, cops don't need you and they expect the same. Uh, and that summarized his opinion of the whole matter of police force and the justice system. Uh, we have a guest tonight who can speak to the issues of being on the inside and having as a result of some bad experiences, some of the same attitude towards some of the people in that field. Uh, we have as our guest, Kenneth Freeman, Kenneth P. Freeman, excuse me, uh, the author of Rose Tainted Justice, uh, a book that explains his uh, experiences in the internal affairs and correction systems in New Jersey. And I'd like to um, let him um, start and let him explain what prompted you to write this book and um, what's the kind of things that are in it? Well, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, Rules Tainted Justice describes and it gives a lot of background mm -hmm. about what really goes on inside of the prison systems. Mo most times people don't really understand everything that happens. They think mm -hmm. that once you lock up an inmate, he goes inside of a prison and then for mm -hmm. whatever reason he disappears for the next yep. 15 or 20 years. But mm -hmm. there's a whole lot more that goes on and yep. uh, what it Rose Standard Justice really focuses on mm -hmm. is the poli um, political aspect of it. Yep. There shouldn't be politics in that much law enforcement, that much right. politics in law enforcement. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, you talk about it from both the point of view of the police and, and law enforcement officers, but there's a lot of stuff in there about judges and how they are or want to be part of the political system and how that, that sort of scuttles some of the things you're trying to accomplish, you know, as a corrections officer or as a you know, police officer. Uh, it opened with a particularly uh, ugly example of how that worked. You had an informant, I understand, who had been very helpful to the um, law enforcement uh, who um, ended up being on the short end of the stick when FBI came in and demanded that some kind of you know, ha thing happen where um, he's, he's turned in because of his um, relations to some of the people involved in the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. Uh, and the key person in this issue was a substitute judge who just flounced in and rendered some strange verdict. Do uh, you want to tell me a, a, a little bit about that? Or? Sure. Uh, what we're talking about in the book, I dis uh, discuss what happened with a particular judge by the name of Patricia Sat Peterson. And mm -hmm. I know oftentimes people don't want to say names, but it's already in the book, so yeah. it's there. But uh, there was a case, there was a confidential informant that you're, that you're speaking mm -hmm. of. This particular informant, uh, he really wasn't the nicest guy in the world. Right. I mean, you really wouldn't like him. He wasn't a, a, yeah. a nice individual. However, mm -hmm. he did work for Internal Affairs and he gave us a lot of good information, mm -hmm. got a lot of nice hits off of him and everything was documented. Mm -hmm. he, he fell out of graces because they found out that he had a certain connection mm -hmm. and they didn't particularly care for that. Yeah. And the idea that we were actually supporting somebody who could possibly mm -hmm. have a connection with the, the 1993 World Trade Center bombing mm -hmm. was really a, a big, a huge embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want that there. And along, that's where I came in. Mm -hmm. And my, my stance for him wasn't mm -hmm. because I liked him. Right. Not by the least. But it was about doing what, what was right. This mm -hmm. is a human being. And the truth of the matter was, mm -hmm. he was an informant of ours. Yeah. And if he was an informant of ours, and there were individuals out there trying to, they were trying to yeah. kill him mm -hmm. inside of the prison. We couldn't let that happen. Yeah. They wanted to pretend as if he, he wasn't an informant. And if something had happened, they wanted to chalk it up as, you know, it was just one of those things that happened. Mm. And that's the, the problem with different layers of uh, justice or injustice getting involved in that you may have carefully con con cultivated uh, relationships with some people, uh, good or bad, in, in, in throughout the system. And when that other layer of bureaucracy comes in, um, they only want their big bag of, you know, rounding uh, their, 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 their body count of how many people they've rounded up in connection with some big uh, issue. And they don't care about your, your network situation. So that, that's what happened in that case. They got a judge who was, was able to just bang, bang. Exactly. And um, they got their pound of flesh and you got one less informant. Um, the motivations for people doing that, um, you, you go into that to quite a, a, a good deal by listing many um, incidents like that. Uh, you seem to say that there's a lot of unneeded um, privilege that, that, that these officers and, and judges seem to have in the system. And it's, some of it seems to come from political ambitions or political aspirations, or just to be part of that club of, of, of heavy duty hitters. Uh, and 
it's un it's sad to see that happening. You know, whatever area it's happening in New Jersey, New York, um, uh, is, is is it really as bad as that? It is. And one of the things that with internal affairs that I've noticed mm -hmm. and, and I've seen, and everyone, no one wants to go against it, yeah. is internal affairs is a, a, a almost like a almost like their own club. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain arrogance. It's not stupidity. It's a certain arrogance that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. The idea that nobody can correct us because we mm -hmm. are the ones who investigate. Anytime mm -hmm. an investigation happens, we're the one who, who investigates. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, case in point, I sent a complaint in, an anonymous mm -hmm. complaint in. Mm -hmm. And once I sent it in, it comes back to us to investigate ourselves. Yeah. Impossible. There's no <laughs> possible way we can you can sit down and investigate yourselves and, mm -hmm. and, and be um, unbiased. Nobody worked out uh, that in the structure who investigates the investigators. They didn't even think about how to have a, yes. or, or, or maybe they did, but then in the real world, it doesn't quite work out the way it, it's sketched out. No, paper. it is. We investigate the investigators. Okay. We investigate ourselves. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, even uh, they have an equal employment opportunity commission or equal employment department mm -hmm. within the departments, and I'm sure every, every department has it. Right. But ours was staffed with our own investigators. And our investigators report to our chief. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when there was a case where there's a particular uh, uh, problem that happened at one of the jails where mm -hmm. the officers were taken off and they were doing some things that they had mm -hmm. no business doing, yeah. that um, the chief of internal affairs, mm -hmm. her husband, was mm -hmm. in charge. His name was Scott Fines. Her yeah. husband was in charge of the prison at the time. Mm -hmm. She led the investigations. And, of course, mm -hmm. certain uh, videotapes disappeared. There was a, a problem where... There was one particular videotape where I think it was two or three minutes mm -hmm. completely disappeared and the investigator claimed that the battery died. The only <laughs> problem with it was the battery died for two minutes and then miraculously it came back, it came back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, shades of the 18 and a half minute gap on a tape in the Watergate <laughs> days. Uh, uh, and, and I think you mentioned um, a case or two uh, where you're in a conversation with, with cops about their tape recordings that have been done where they were caught bluntly talking about uh, corruption that they performed uh, it, and didn't seem to want to be in, uh, reminded <laughs> that it was put on tape. You, know? you, you have to remember, it's arrogance. Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody who's never been investigated. Yeah. The idea that I can do anything I want, it's almost mm -hmm. like a brat child. The idea that, you know, mommy makes a million and daddy makes two, and two billion. Mm -hmm and my uncle is in charge of you know, the school system, mm -hmm. nobody can come against me. Everything I do is fine. And that's where they are. They are real spoiled brats the of New Jersey. The Denzel Washington uh, training day uh, kind of syndrome where they say, I'm, I, I got immunity, I'm an almighty cop, nobody's got nothing on me. You know. there's, there's, a certain, there's a certain pride that goes with wearing a badge. And, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm an advocate for officers, I really mm -hmm. am. Good policing, I don't think there's anything that comes close to it, mm -hmm. however, when you have those who are corrupt and are doing things that are going to endanger not only the community mm -hmm. and the public, but going to also endanger other good officers, mm -hmm. then I have a problem with that. Yeah, I, I just th made a movie allusion there uh, to one movie, but there was a more recent movie, American Gangsters, which painted a very positive image of a New Jersey cop, uh, who, who, a guy who um, was straight and narrow and, and turned in money he could have pocketed, you know, uh, and. Are uh, you telling me that their peop those people are, don't exist anymore? No, they definitely exist. Okay. But true to the movie, and mm -hmm. you know, you you take what what you will from the movie itself. Mm -hmm. But the idea that this particular officer, because he turned in the million dollars or mm -hmm. however much it was, mm -hmm. he was ostracized. Nobody wanted to be bothered with him. They yeah. wanted to deal with him because the problem is they don't have anything to hold over his head, mm -hmm. and that makes a dangerous person. It's right. easier to deal with for, for corrupt officers to deal with mm -hmm. other corrupt officers. Yeah. So that, that type of officer, he exists mm -hmm. it, on, on many levels. I've, I've got calls from, uh, and emails yeah. from many officers, from, uh, from Illinois, mm -hmm. from uh, uh, California, mm -hmm. Florida, yeah. and even you know, New York and New Jersey, wow. who are talking about similar incidents when they're going through things. And they tell me that about, the, especially about the book, they say, you know what, I was dealing with the exact same thing. Mm, that's, uh, I, I can see um, many ways this can go. But I said the political angle, the uh, the basically the blackmail angle. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, there was even a story out of D.C. about a D.C. madam who is mysteriously now dead, yes. um, possibly suicide, possibly foul play. Uh, but one uh, thing that's come up in the discussions is that oh, you know, not only are there a lot of people who are up, who who don't want to be exposed by her little black book, or whatever. Uh, there's probably a lot of people who uh, already know about who's been 
going to who, which, um, you know, prostitution service, but they don't want the secrets to be divulged because then they lose their hold on the politicians who or other people who are involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the, yeah, it is a kind of a corrupt system that wants to reinforce the corruption mm -hmm. um, in order to have the leverage, you know, uh, that that it desires. Uh, do you think that 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 extends to uh, the other things you've intersected with the the judicial system and the uh, correction system in New Jersey? Absolutely. You, you have to remember, and one of the points I, I do want to touch on um, briefly, mm -hmm. there are officers who are in situations where they don't want to be, mm -hmm. and they don't like it. And anytime you hear, um, most times when you hear about an officer mm -hmm. get, getting injured or shot or those types of things, it's not the corrupt um, cop. Yeah. It's usually a, 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 a backlash mm -hmm. from something that has happened before, right. and they're catching the brunt of it. And that's the dangerous part about right. it. But as far as corruption infiltrating the different uh, different departments and mm -hmm. especially on uh, judicial, there is it, so many is so many ways that it happens. Wow. The problem with going after a lot of these uh, individuals is mm -hmm. that they never take they'll never take uh, responsibility for anything. Mm -hmm. Accountability is an is in an all time mm -hmm. low. Every time something goes wrong, they say that the mm -hmm. system failed. Yeah. It's one person. It right. all, if you keep going, it always goes back to one person mm -hmm. who's done something, and yeah. that's where you start from. You get the first mm -hmm. person, then go after the next person. Yeah, I, it's just strange that you know the people who who go into law enforcement and and other areas of the justice system, uh, you they come from different walks of life where mm -hmm. they've possibly already proved themselves. Like you're you're an uh, ex marine, mm -hmm. and others uh, probably came in from the army or from. Um, other areas of, of, of investigation, or maybe they worked even at a higher level of government before they went back to their own state. Mm -hmm. um, so what makes one um, straight and narrow person stay straight and narrow in the business, and another person come in and basically just start yelling, where's mine, you know, <laughs> and, right. and whatnot? It, I believe that it's an amount of integrity. It has mm -hmm. to be a part of you that says, I don't care what goes on around me, mm -hmm. this is who I am and this is what I'm gonna do. And that comes from somebody who's really strong mm -hmm. and someone who's confident, high self-esteem. Yeah. And these are the individuals that you really want in your police force. And we have, we have mm -hmm. a, a lot. There, there are so many officers who really are not gonna change. Right. Unfortunately, you have some who are not too strong. Mm -hmm. And the influence, the influence is hard. It, right. it, it's, it's a lot of pressure that goes on police officers. We were, I was talking earlier about the idea that you have an officer who's coming from uh, a, an area mm -hmm. that's nothing like what he's going to be patrolling. Right. And the pressure that comes on from the precinct and those who are around him mm -hmm. can, be, can be enormous. Yep. And it can and it can almost flatten flatten his spirit and it can almost destroy him. Yeah, there's that tension between you know, what their principles are, whatever they are, with their commitment to their buddies as a social matter and as mm -hmm. a matter of loyalty and their situations on the job. You know, you might have gone through a lot of hard, horrible stuff, you know, and that may have hardened some people or it may have given some people a sense of resilience, you know. It uh, is, but you know, those things, those things will affect you. And I don't, I don't, I don't mean to say that it won't. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of working inside of a prison, first of all, mm -hmm. should, should scare most people. If anybody mm -hmm. says, oh, I'm fine with working inside of a prison, some, I wouldn't, really mm -hmm. wouldn't take them, you know, I don't, I don't think they're being genuine about it. But if it's bothering you too much, mm -hmm. then it's time to look for a new job. It's, you know, and there's and yeah. no, it's nothing, nothing wrong with it. There's no embarrassment, it's, and mm -hmm. it, you haven't diminished as, a, as an individual. Right. But some people are just not cut out for certain work. Yeah. And some people are not cut out for certain work for a long or an extended period of time. Okay, let me uh, hold you on that for a moment. Let me just break for a moment to uh, bring up that this kind of discussion, which you're not going to see in many other places, is brought to you by devoted and very dedicated libertarians um, working throughout the New York metropolitan area. Uh, many of them meet monthly uh, with the Manhattan Libertarian Party, uh, who holds meetings at the Ukrainian East Village restaurant, um, second Monday of every month. Uh, they have a website, uh, manhattanlp.org, uh, that I uh, was it dot com, whichever it is. <laughs> I hope that they, uh, you, you, you take a look at that site along with the, um, the state party, um, uh, ny.lp.org. Uh, the state committee of the Libertarian Party of New York uh, takes care of a lot of things uh, towards um, promoting liberty throughout the state and um, shining a light on um, fraud and corruption as well through shows and um, efforts like this. Uh, we also have party um, apparatus in Queens, the uh, Libertarian Party of, of Queens County, uh, which has a, a website at lpqc.org. Uh, 
or, uh, or uh, and I hope you uh, take a look at that as well. And I hope you continue to support the Libertarian Party and Libertarian Movement uh, by um, watching and supporting shows like Hard Fire. Um, I want to switch now to more of the, the correction side and some of your experiences there. Uh, uh, this seems like um, this seems like an unbroken pattern of you, you're finding people with these uh, multiple agendas and with um, compromised principles uh, all, all the way from the police department to the justice system to the correction system in at least in New Jersey. Um, uh, what happened when you got into corrections? When I first got into corrections, mm -hmm. well. I think like most people, you, you really don't have a full understanding mm -hmm. of what you're doing. And yep. you have to really feel your way around. Mm -hmm. But early in my career, mm -hmm. I was uh, I was handpicked for internal affairs. And mm -hmm. that was nice. I, I really enjoyed the idea of internal affairs and what mm -hmm. I would be doing and what it represents. Mm -hmm. But once you get inside, that's when you figure out that things aren't necessarily what they appear to be. Yeah. And you have to... It really takes a strong person. I'm not saying about myself, but just in general. Mm -hmm. It really takes a strong person to, to say... I'm not going to go along with the, with the crowd because right. that's that's easy. It's yeah. easy to go go along with the crowd, mm -hmm. and actually, it's very uh, uh, is is you'll prosper that way. Mm -hmm. You'll get promoted. Uh, you'll have a lot of people pat you on the back, and those are the kind of things that go well. I didn't like some of the things I was saying. Uh, the way that they were dealing with different types mm -hmm. of evidence. When you see yep. people destroying evidence, <sighs> falsifying documents, those kind of things, mm -hmm. those are crimes. Right. And I saw it as black and white, but and everyone else mm -hmm. saw it as more more of a gray shade mm -hmm. and that's what happens it, it's not a it's not an overwhelming immediate right. thing mm -hmm. it takes time and it's almost like uh, like water on a rock eventually yeah. it's gonna break through if, if you allow it to what I uh, get from that is that um every time there is a kind of um, a demonstration of corruption or covering up of crimes or disposal of evidence there's supposed to be a process even in corrections for undoing that and investigating and uh, prosecuting the violators yeah. What happened to that process? It's there. Mm -hmm. It's there. You're, there's whistleblowers, yeah. which I was. Mm -hmm. And whistleblowers are protected mm -hmm. according to law. Right. And there's certain ways that you can report things. Mm -hmm. And I tried every one of them. Right. And at the end of the day, it comes down to the same thing. They don't want you to tell. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it doesn't help. And one, the main thing is it destroys the image, the idea that we're really, we're, we're really supporting a corrupt organization. And nobody mm -hmm. wants that. No mm -hmm. one wants to believe that the police force, that the correction system, that the fire, de fire departments mm -hmm. are corrupt. Nobody wants to believe that. Yeah. So the easiest way to do it is to just discredit everything. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do it is by going out to the individual who's making a complaint. So that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's textbook. It, it's going to incredible levels up at the, um, especially at the federal level as well, where you, we, we see whistleblowers uh, who uh, get investigated, you know, beca uh, because they, are, are breaching national secrets. You know, mm -hmm. that is, when somebody wants to tell something, um, sometimes they're higher ups and say what the area that they want to talk about is classified or, or, or it breaks agency protocol in a way that's violates some rule, and that's how they go after the whistleblower. Uh, I remember even 12 years ago, there was the case of uh, Ron Brown, the Secretary of Commerce, who went down, who plane went down a, in a crash, but um, the forensic examiners found. There were four of them, who four different coroners who found what looked like a bullet hole in his mm -hmm. skull, mm -hmm. uh, and they went public with this, and I believe all four of them got fired, you know, because they, somebody didn't want that information uh, to be uh, out there. But the 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 the, the intelligence of that is, mm -hmm. if I can really discredit you, make you a disgruntled employee, mm -hmm. then you have less you have less, less credibility. credibility. And yeah. once you get into the courts, they said, well, we can't trust him because he's just upset because of this reason. Mm -hmm. With me, they had to do something because mm -hmm. they, they they really messed up in the beginning mm -hmm. when they listed me as, they called me a rising star. Right. And these were in their handwriting. Yeah. It's a rising star. They said that I was, I, I should soon become the commissioner of the department. Right. And I was rising up and there was nothing to stop me. All your evals were up, up, up. Everything know. was great. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's, and the little mm -hmm. comments about intelligence and, you know, how bright and, you know, think on his feet and mm -hmm. those, all those things. Yeah. That flew in their faces. When mm -hmm. they when I became a whistleblower, right. So they they will come after you with anything they can. Mm -hmm. And that's um, perhaps the best defense of whistleblowers in the modern age that they they stay on the straight and narrow themselves because they know what's coming. Uh, there's laws and thing and, and um, procedures in place to protect them technically, but as you've seen in your own life mm -hmm. and we've seen in some other examples, uh, there's ways to bring you down a peg mm -hmm. uh, to compromise your um, your stature. Uh, 
and were there some whistleblowers that you've encountered um, while you were there who got hammered um, and, and went down? Um, I mean, well, you survived, but the others, did everybody survive uh, this sort? Well, the best advice I got before, mm -hmm. I wrote my first letter, you know, uh, mm -hmm. before the, the first letter that I, that, in which I became a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. Someone told me, expect to go it all by yourself. Wow. And I knew that, that I was going to mm -hmm. be by myself. And sure enough, even the people who would have stood by mm -hmm. me, somehow, got promoted or got pushed into a certain a different mm -hmm. area and you, it leaves you by yourself but it's an individual fight if you're looking mm -hmm. to fight or you're looking to have somebody to stand next to you yeah it's not going to happen you're going to have to stand mm -hmm. for you by yourself and you have to decide what you if what yeah. you're doing is worth it okay well, let's go back to judges a little bit because they seem to be part of the process of supposedly correcting injustice or corruption uh, what's happening with them in New Jersey as a result of some of the disclosures you've come, you, you've made, you know, about their actions? Uh, are they is it more the same, or is it did some of them themselves get bounced uh, as a result of being exposed? Or? Well, I'll say this much: I haven't, I didn't work underneath um, the present governor Corzine, mm -hmm. but I worked under Whit, uh, McGreevy. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Christine Todd. Oh, Whitman Christine Todd Whitman and and uh, McGreevy, mm -hmm. um, James McGreevy. Chris, Christy Whitman administration had its flaws, mm -hmm. but McGreevy's administration, worse than Napoleon's. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the idea of everything in, in McGreevy, you know, mm -hmm. well, anyhow. And uh, as it's for disclosure, you're a Democrat? Uh, I'm or, neither. Or you're neither, okay. Uh, we just wanted to say this transcends politics uh, and partisan party labels. You know, we just, this happens to be, in this case, McGreevy's administration having more problems. Than right. The only difference between the Republicans and the Democrats, and I don't know if this get me in trouble, but the only difference that I've seen is the name. Mm -hmm. they, wow. they, they're all the same. I mean, once mm -hmm. you, whatever works for them right now, they'll, they'll say it, but the moment it stops working for them, they'll change it. And anyhow, both parties switch, you know, switch bases back in the 60s. You're so. confirming um, what third party people are always saying that there's not a dime's worth of difference between the two major parties when it comes to their bottom line, which is getting in power, staying in power, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, making money along the way. Right. Uh, I just want to mention one other example of, of, of out of control judge. Uh, recently, as of the week of this taping, there was a uh, decision in Ohio where uh, a judge said uh, the coroner's report involving police um, misconduct of, with, with suspects. Uh, where, where they tasered him and some of the suspects died, uh, th that that information had to be removed by the medical examiner. Uh, the, the, the coroner's statements in his report, official report, you know, that tasers contributed to the death mm -hmm. of the suspect uh, was considered too hot uh, to be, uh, to stay in place. So not only was, is a judge in that case telling um, somebody not to report something, they're telling him to unreport. Uh, abuse. <laughs> well, it makes sense when you consider it, it's not stupidity. These these individuals aren't dumb mm -hmm. by by any stretch of the imagination. It's arrogance. Yeah. It's nobody can check me. Nobody can keep me here. I can do anything I want and get mm -hmm. away with it. Yeah. And w after you've gotten away with it for so long, it's hard mm -hmm. to convince somebody that they really can. Yep. Um, I could go on for a couple of uh, times here about this. Um, in New York, um, uh, there's a, a tax. Um, activist um, Robert Schultz who told me uh, that you know he um, was working on a, a, an attacks case uh, and uh, the judge in that case apparently indicated to him in informal conversation they agreed with him uh, but suddenly like uh, turned against him you know in, in court on the matter and uh, it turned out when he when Schultz investigated this uh, though that the judge uh, had been talked to by some local Republican politicians about a particular position he might get mm -hmm. if he didn't go along with one side of that, a partic that particular case, you know, so. It works the same way, like, like I was saying, in, mm -hmm. even in the book about uh, how to judge, we had this judge and he knew everything about the case. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, the thousands of documents, I mean, yeah. the, the books were just stacked up. How mm -hmm. many you have to bring in there? Books of documents. Yeah. The, the, the uh, day that he's supposed to here, uh, mm -hmm. the case they were trying to, they wanted to ask, they asked for a summary judgment to throw it out. Right. That particular day, we go down, we're down and we're waiting to see what my attorney, mm -hmm. and he's sick. Yeah. Well, postpone it. No. The this, um, sitting judge decided that she was going to take over, and she took 6,000 documents, flipped through with her finger, and said, I'm dismissing it. <laughs> um, and, and then she had the audacity to say, mm -hmm. 
I'll put my my reasons on record later because I have something to go. You know, mm -hmm. let let them know. You know, I'm I'm in a rush. Yeah, I think I think you recall in that the vignette that you mentioned in the book there that that both attorneys on both sides were flabbergasted by at this procedure <laughs> this I, was instituting. And you know, and this the, this the crazy part. And even though he was going against me, mm -hmm. the deputy attorney general at the time, Sage Matthews, he was a decent individual. He really was during depositions and mm -hmm. during uh, the other meetings that we had. Yeah. He really seemed like a decent individual, and his heart really wasn't into the prosecution. Mm -hmm. But he was doing his job, and he went through everything. Yeah. That summary judgment should have been thrown out, mm -hmm. and we should have been in, in court and bringing every, uh, all the information out. Mm -hmm. This judge looked at it. She walked in, the way she walked into the courtroom mm -hmm. was an embarrassment. Right. But in any case, after she gets there to go through it, and her reasoning for dismissing it was because if she believes the other side she said, we have no case. Yeah. But that's not the level, that's not what you look for in summary judgment. Summary mm -hmm. judgment, you got to look, go against the, uh, the party who's asking for it to be dismissed. Yeah. And you have to go with the, the plaintiffs. If the plaintiff's facts are mm -hmm. true, not that they are. Right. But if they're true, is it reason enough to go on with the yeah. case? And that's what you decided on. She went completely opposite. Mm -hmm. I, she was rewarded, by the way. I, I, I I'm, not, had to I'm read shocked. The book to figure I'm it shocked. Out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, the book is called Rose tainted justice and and I there's there's ways to get it um do you want to go into that uh, we could got less than sure. a minute here sure you can go on the website at www.gatsonjefferiespub.com uh gatson g a d s o n jeffries j e f f r i e s pub.com right. or if you just do keyword rose tainted justice it will pull up all that information or you can go to Barnes and Nobles um B Dalton's Borders bookstore uh and some of the other smaller um book locations around so Mm -hmm. And I, uh, it's an impressive read, an impressive uh, book. I highly recommend people take a look at this, and um, you know, and and really get get to know the kind of system that they're really living in versus the, what they're told in the textbooks and on TV uh, shows. Uh, thank you for your Kenneth P. Freeman for your magnificent discussion, and um, I hope you all join us for another episode of Hard Fire. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. But McGreevy's administration, worse than Napoleon's. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the idea of everything in, in McGreevy, you know, mm -hmm. well, anyhow. And uh, as it's for disclosure, you're a Democrat? Uh, I'm or, neither. Or you're neither, okay. Yeah. Uh, we just wanted to say this transcends politics uh, and partisan party labels. You know, we, this happens to be, in this case, McGreevy's administration having more problems. Right. The only difference between the Republicans and the Democrats, and I don't know if this get me in trouble, but the only difference that I've seen is the name. Mm -hmm. They, wow. they, they all the same. I mean, whatever works for them right now, they'll, they'll say it, but the moment it stops working for them, they'll change it. And anyhow, both parties switch, you know, switch cases back in the 60s. So. confirming um, what third party people are always saying that it's not a dime's worth of difference between.